All right, it's finally here. So you might notice this looks a little different than the previous videos. This is because I actually recorded those way back, like before quarantine even, uh, hence the sudden change in hair length. I was hoping that growing my hair out over lockdown would make me look more like Tatsuya or Akechi, but some days it ends up looking more Jonathan. To put into perspective how long ago this was, since I recorded these parts, TMS Encore has come out, P5R has come out in the West, uh, P5S came out in Japan, Catherine's gotten a Switch port, and SMT5... Well, I wanted to make a joke about it being in the same state, but... The day before I planned to record this, Atlas finally gave us some news, making me rewrite this and push the recording back by a week. We begin off with possibly the biggest game on this list, Persona 5. Released in September 2016 in Japan and April 2017 in the West. This game can be considered a breakout success, even compared to previous breakout games such as SMT3 and earlier mainline Persona. This game is set a good few years after Persona 4. Gameplay wise it follows very much the same formula as the previous two ones. However there are several smaller changes that lead to a great improvement in the overall experience. One such change is the social links, now renamed as confidants, which actually offer a more tangible benefit in combat. As you level these confidants up, you gain access to exclusive skills to benefit the player during dungeon segments. Another improvement is the dungeon design. Persona 1 and 2 use bespoke dungeon layouts, whereas 3 and 4 mostly use procedurally generated dungeons. Persona 5 returns to having manually designed dungeons, which enables dungeons to actually have some puzzle solving and exploration. I've said dungeons way too many times that it stopped sounding like a word. This game only has two real endings, one of them being a very clear bad end. Persona 5 also featured DLC, however it was just cosmetic or additional personas, no actual story content or side quests. From the most well-known game on the list, we go to the least well-known, or at least as far as these modern entries are concerned. Shin Megami Tensei Synchronicity Prologue was released exclusively in Japan in October 2017. It's a 2D Metroidvania-style game starring Jack Frost and Pyrojack, released for free on PC. It's a direct prologue to Strange Journey, being released to generate hype for it, so we'll consider it part of the Shin Megami Tensei branch. But given the protagonists, it could be argued to belong into the Jack Bros branch. Synchronicity Prologue technically features multiple endings too. Upon completion of the game, various headlines appear, mostly relating to Strange Journey. However, one headline is about the survival of a specific character from this game, which can change depending on the player's progress in-game upon fighting the final boss. This game was only available officially for a few months, but thanks to fans it's still relatively easy to get a hold of. The aforementioned Strange Journey remake came out shortly afterwards, or at least in Japan it did. This game was titled Deep Strange Journey in Japan and Strange Journey Redux when it made it to the West. This remake added a new major character, Alex, and a new bonus dungeon, which, alongside Alex, was tied to the new endings, of which there were three, one new ending for each alignment. Sticking with Mainline, we have our final mobile game, and the first mobile original game to be officially translated into English. It's spelt DX2, but pronounced as D2, like Hunter x Hunter. This is a gacha game released for the iOS and Android platforms. It features a visual novel style story mode, as well as regular events, including crossovers with Bayonetta and, going full circle back to Nocturne, Devil May Cry. Moving back to the Persona branch, there's a pair of games that follow on from Persona 4 Dancing All Night. Persona 3, Dancing in Moonlight, and Persona 5, Dancing in Starlight. These games don't have a visual novel story mode, but they have mini character events unlocked through gameplay that tell us a little bit of story. The games share a plot as a sequel to Persona 4 Dancing, using time travel and dreams to let the two games take place at the same time. Both control mostly the same as P4D, and they have a lot of DLC tracks and DLC dancers which include Shinjiro, Akechi, Theodore, Lavenza, Labris and Sho. The DLC packs are also interchangeable between the two games. This game is notable in that it features names for the Persona 3 and 5 protagonists, taken from their respective anime adaptations, but only in the menus, making those as close to canon names as we're likely to get. 
While I haven't made it a habit of listing every crossover and cameo appearance from Mega Ten characters, future video idea maybe, I want to quickly mention BlazBlue Cross Tag Battle, because this was developed by the same company that made Persona 4 Arena. It's a crossover between Persona 4 Arena, Blaze Blue, Undernight Inbirth, Ruby, Arcana Heart, Senra and Kagura, and Akatsuki Blitzkampf. Only the first four members of the Persona 4 Arena cast were initially playable, but the rest of the Arena cast, as well as Adachi, have been added as DLC. Back over on the Persona branch, we have Persona Q2, which is possibly the last physical 3DS game to see wide release. Now my script did initially say, last physical 3DS game, but limited run games have been producing games in limited quantities since. However, I am British and none of those games have yet to be released in power regions, so Q2 is still effectively the last 3DS game for me. This game is a crossover between Persona 3, 4 and 5, with only one route this time, focusing on the Persona 5 cast. Another fun addition here is the female MC from Persona 3 Portable as a party member. This game again unites the cast through time travel and removes their memories after the events of it. However, this is still a lengthy story heavy RPG and follows on from the previous one in gameplay style, while adding in some adjustments to make the gameplay much smoother. Catherine received the enhanced remake treatment, something that's very common from Atlas, with Catherine Full Body. This was released for PS4, PS Vita and later on Nintendo Switch, however the PS Vita version stayed in Japan. Full Body adds in a new character, Rin, with a new route. This new Rin route has three endings, and as well as this, Full Body adds an extra alternative ending for the C and K Catherines, bringing the total endings to either 13 or 14, depending on if you count the bonus ending from the original. This game also featured DLC, starring Joker from Persona 5, and featuring the rest of the Persona cast. This is an entirely standalone story though. We're continuing on with the enhanced remakes here with Persona 5 Royal. This game adds two new confidants, one of which was also a party member, new areas and plenty of additional gameplay tweaks. This game features an additional playable third semester, like Persona 4 Golden, with a new playable dungeon and extended ending too. Unlike vanilla Persona 5, this just released for the PS4, not also PS3, and all original Persona 5 DLC was free with Royal. Going for the hat-trick of enhanced remakes, we have Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE Encore. What a title. This is an enhanced remake of the Wii U's Tokyo Mirage Sessions, released on Switch in early 2020. This game doesn't add any new party members, but rather adds some extra attacks featuring non-playable support characters. A new dungeon, new songs and new events have also been added as standard for these remakes. Unfortunately, this release is based on the heavily censored Western version of the original. However, this is likely just a side effect of the game having a simultaneous Western release. Which is a nice change, for we usually have to wait months at best to get Mega Ten games over here. Only three games left, and neither of these have been released in English yet. Unless P5S has been released between me filming this and releasing. Which is, while unlikely, it's still possible. Persona 5 Scramble The Phantom Strikers, or at least as it's titled in Japanese, came out in February 2020 in Japan and, uh, well as of July there's still not an English release date. The game's an action game developed by Koei Tecmo, but I'm not spoiling it for you or myself so I can't say much about the story. But if you want to spoil yourself I'm pretty sure there's English sub playthroughs online. And right at the end we're back over with Shin Megami Tensei to round this off. Firstly, we have a Nocturne HD remaster for the PS4 and Switch, released 2020 for Japan and 2021 for the West. And the final new game here, we have the long-awaited Shin Megami Tensei 5. It was announced in January 2017, and since then we've seen two trailers, but as of August 2020, no gameplay. While we're technically done with the games, and I don't like listing every port, I think there is one worth mentioning. Persona 4 Golden got a surprise Steam release in 2020. Well as surprising as a release can be when it's leaked a week before. The game was finally no longer trapped on a dead console. While other Atlas games have had PC ports, such as Catherine and if we go further back, the original Persona, this one felt notable enough here for me to give it a mention. All that's left now is to deal with the extra media. 
Strange Journey Redux got a manga side story called Deftament Shin Megami Tensei DSJ Another Report. Persona 5 received a few manga adaptions. The main manga is still ongoing and has now introduced characters from Persona 5 Royal, turning itself into an adaption of that as well. Further still, there's a more light-hearted three-volume spin-off story called Memento's Mission, as well as some short comedic anthologies. Persona 5 received an anime adaption, in fact it received several. A short anime side story came out just before the release of the game in Japan, and a relatively poorly received main TV series was also aired. It didn't cover the final two dungeons, and those were later covered in hour-long length specials. These anime versions also received drama CDs, and a companion app was released which featured some mild interaction with the cast. Persona 5 will also receive at least one stage play adaption, since the first only covers the first few dungeons. And lastly, Persona Q2 received a manga titled Persona Q2 Roundabout, which, like the original Roundabout, was mostly light-hearted and comedic in tone. I said lastly on the Persona Q2 manga, but actually there's one more because I forgot this and I'm having to re-record this just before the video is going live. We also have a Catherine Fullbody manga known as Catherine Fullbody Side Story of K, which, surprising no one, is a side story starring Catherine with a K. I've got some thoughts I want to put at the end of this episode regarding what I feel the future is going to be like for Mega 10, but there's one final bonus part coming soon, so I'll give you my thoughts then. Remember to subscribe to join me for that, but until then, stay safe and have a great rest of your day.